Revenge Plots I don't often consider revenge plots, mainly because they always seem to follow the same general patterns and arc. They have a tendency to end with the revenge-seeking character either walking away from their goal or not having a clue what to do once they accomplish it. There is a certain tempting simplicity to a revenge plot, I admit, but it is so very rare to see it done in a manner that doesn't feel like it's just retreading the same old ideas. Which is why Joe Abercrombie's Best Served Cold was such a delightful thing for me to discover. Spoilers ahead. First, let's get an overview of what this novel is and the world it plays around in. Best Served Cold is a standalone novel set in the world of the First Law, a fantasy series that leans considerably darker than most and can often give a sword and sorcery feel, but on a much grander scale. The setting also leans away from the medieval trappings with the various nations included being more varied. This novel was my first introduction to the setting, not counting the short story collection Sharp Ends. Fortunately, I never felt lost or lacking in context. Specifically, Best Served Cold is set in Styria. A place that gives off a Renaissance Italy vibe, with it being divided into smaller polities and the notion of a unified Styria being treated as some distant dream. Also there's something about the names associated with the place that gives off an Italy, but harsher and more grim feel to it. The story is, as implied above, one of revenge. Monza's Caro Mercato Monza for short is our main character. A mercenary commander looking to avenge herself and her dead brother on the people who betrayed them both, and gathering a few strange and dangerous allies along the way. And as any revenge story goes, there is a lot of killing and it is done in a lot of ways. All of it is delivered with Abercrombie's flowing prose, making it easy to lose yourself in the machinations of the characters, the details of the world, or just how well it all comes together at the end, with Monza in a position of considerable power. With that out of the way, I want to get into the main reason I enjoyed Best Served Cold so much, the characters. The plot of the novel isn't particularly complex and while it has a few surprises, they aren't anything particularly grand. What really drives a reader forward here is the motley crew of blackguards, crooks, fiends and the like that Monza surrounds herself with or has to deal with in her pursuit of revenge. Each of them balances being sympathetic and abhorrent in different ways. For instance, Nicomo Koska is a mercenary captain that can be easy to view in a harsh light because of his betrayals, his vices, and his general demeanor. However, he has a peculiar eccentric charm that makes it easy to sympathize with him, and there is a sense of relatability to his many failures even if the reader can recognize that at least some of the blame falls on him. Another good example is Castor Morvir, a master poisoner. There is something horrifying about his sheer sociopathy and fondness for just poisoning anyone he comes across, but there's also an awkwardness about him that makes him just slightly shy of coming across as truly monstrous. At least, until that incident in a bank where he poisons essentially everyone because he couldn't figure out how to poison just the one target. Ruthlessly efficient, but monstrous. Of course. This character work also excels in how Abercrombie handles the two primary perspective characters, Monza and a Northman named Call Shivers. These two start in starkly opposing perspectives, with Call having a more idealistic bent and Monza being colder and more ruthless. Their character arcs take up a large part of the introspective side of the narrative, and just as they started in opposite points, they go in opposite directions. They don't quite meet halfway in the middle but it's easy to see they were an influence on each other and it's a delight to watch that play out as you read. Our main character is really the biggest highlight of the novel. She is nuanced and complex in ways that few main characters in a revenge plot tend to be, and she ends the novel in a better position personally and materially than when she started. She is not a traditional hero and she has many qualities that most people would rather shy away from but her determination and cunning are admirable traits and she experiences a more positive arc even as she pursues her goals. She's not a hero or a monster, Monza is flawed, just like the rest of us. Monza's journey is excellently done, and the end of the story is written in such a way that it brings things to a satisfying conclusion while still implying more to come for the woman known as the Serpent of Talons. Her journey is also very much in line with the good kind of dark fantasy, 
where life is messy and you don't always have the moral choice available to you, but characters can still be sympathetic or even admirable regardless. She is a product of a harsh world, and she herself is understandably and even sympathetically harsh as a result. I think a revenge story succeeds or fails depending on how sympathetic the reader finds the character seeking revenge, and the ability to remain so no matter what they do in pursuit of their goal. Monza's arc of slowly gaining a bit of Call's scruples and ideals even as Call himself is losing them helps keep her sympathetic and, if not necessarily likable, then the better choice compared to the people she's setting herself against. One other thing I want to mention is how well Abercrombie gives us the world of the first law in this novel. There are what I assume to be little nods to the rest of this shared universe here and there, but the story is self-contained and the implications of other things going on don't detract. In fact, they actually manage to enrich the narrative by making Styria feel more lived in, like it's a part of a world that is not just designed to revolve around the narrative. But at the same time, it is never written in a way that made me feel like I needed to read the other books to get a full picture of Monza's story. It is part of a shared universe, but it never feels like you need to read the other books. And that's it. That is my perspective on Joe Abercrombie's wonderful revenge fantasy novel, Best Served Cold.